depth chart the way he has um, is a testament to how he's he's taken to the position and, and embraced what we do up front and how we do it. And, um, and in some ways, it's almost nice to work with a guy that doesn't have any uh, prior experience because there's, he has no concept of how to play the position. So in a lot of ways, he, he's kind of the perfect student because he'll do whatever you tell him to do. So it's kind of nice as a coach. And he, he's really embraced it. He, I know he kind of gravitated towards Brandon and some of the older guys, and um, that helped him make the transition. That number three tackle spot is going to be a little up in the air. How much of a shot does he have to contribute there? I think he has as much a shot as anybody else. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to say that anybody's going to be um, in a certain spot as we move on here. There's a lot of positions that you know we're just trying to find the, the best five guys in whatever combination that is. And if we can find six, seven, eight, that's pretty good too. Um, so whatever we have to do, to ensure that we have some depth at the tackle position, I think we're open to doing that. And, and so I would give him as good a chance as anybody. We don't have any preconceived notions about who it should be. It's going to be the guy that performs the most consistently and can help us win on Saturday. Is adding depth, is that the biggest thing you guys have to do on the offensive line this year? I think we have to keep developing depth. Yeah. Um, I don't, unfortunately, in college football, there's no free agents. And we're not going to add anybody in, in the season. So we need to develop that depth. And, uh, we need younger guys to, to come along and, and join the party. That's that's what we need. That's what the focus is on. Is on. That's what the emphasis has been on since the spring, and, and we're still waiting for those guys to do that. And we'll see who emerges. A year ago, you talked about Andrew Dunnell, that his, probably his best position was outside. Mm -hmm. He was coming off the ACL, and, and you played him. You rotate him a lot at guard. What kind of growth have you seen over the last year in him, and, and what's his potential? On He's come a long way. Um, I think the, it's not really fair to Andrew uh, to compare him to, to where he was at last year because he was coming off of that injury, mm -hmm. and, and it was a pretty significant injury. And, and a lot of times, guys that have knee injuries, regardless of what it is, um, you know, you get them back to practice in, in a pretty short amount of time mm -hmm. relative to what it once was. Uh, but when do guys really return to form and get confident? Uh, that's usually sig a significant uh, amount of time after they return. So, you know, we got him back in the spring. Um, but I wouldn't say he really started hitting his stride physically until the Purdue game. So I think that was November. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the time I can go back to and think, okay, this is the Andrew we all expected to see at some point this year. He's finally emerged a little bit. So from that Purdue game on, um, I think he's been playing his best football. And it's a little bit more difficult when you're a 6'7 guy mm -hmm. and you're playing inside. And um, you know, leverage is, is not to your advantage in there. When you have long arms and you play on the outside, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, when you have long arms and you're tall and you play on the inside, that can be a little bit difficult. So uh, since he's moved back outside, I think he's become a little bit more comfortable than maybe he was inside. Mm -hmm. and, and we have very high expectations for him. We have high expectations for everybody, but a fifth-year senior in our program has played a lot of football like he has. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the ceiling is. I just know it, sh it should be high. Brian, Look, from, for, given the fact that most people watch the ball, and not mm -hmm. line play. I wonder if you could explain to us from maybe a technical standpoint, whether it's footwork, finesse, strength, power, what makes Brandon Sheriff so good? Um, well, you know, I think uh, you know, a lot of it is physical, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I say that when I go out and I clinic and I show tape of Brandon, that uh, for me to sit up there and, and pretend that I've coached him to do anything or any of us have coached him to do anything, that's kind of silly because uh, you know, like with all due respect to my wife, I, I think Brandon would be the same player if she was coaching him, and this isn't what she does for a living. So a lot of it is just physical and what he was born with and what he's been blessed with. Um, but the other part of that is is the way he's embraced um, the work that it takes in the weight room, on the, on the practice fields, uh, on a daily basis, things that nobody sees, um, whether it's, you know, eating properly, getting his proper rest, working out, the attention to detail and the fundamentals we ask him um, to use is is excellent. But uh, when when he you know moves on or plays somewhere else, they'll probably ask him to do different things. And my guess is he'll be just as good a player doing those things because um, you know really it's the physical aspect and then it's mental. But that's all about who he is. That's really not anything about technique. He was raised the right way. His parents did a tremendous job. He's embraced that. And, um, he's learned all the way through high school and, and now college. And so I think it's more about him than uh, any fundamentals or anything like that. And then, you know, he just uh, he plays football the way you would hope anybody would play football. He, he plays football with intent, and um, it's kind of fun to watch. It's kind of missing from the game sometimes. Now he chose to come back for a fifth year. How do you want to help him become the best player he can be? You just coach him like we would coach any other player. Um, everybody has things they can work on. Everybody in our rooms at a different stage. We have. We have first-year players um, that are new to our system. We have first-year players that are new to the offensive line. 
Um, guys like Ike Bucker, we, we have all kinds of different stages. We've got guys that played 10 or 15 games for us. We've got guys that played 30 games. And we've got guys that play at all Big Ten level, and we, we've got guys that we're waiting to see if they'll play at a, um, all Iowa practice level so we can get them out there and get them reps. So everybody's at a different stage, and you try to coach the individuals. And I think the best way I'd describe it is as you get older in our program, the things you need to improve on, the things you need to really polish, that list gets shorter and shorter as you get older. And when, when you're younger, it's a pretty long list. And, and as you get older, it's, it's a little bit shorter. I think the critical thing is how do guys approach that every day? And, and that's the one fun thing about coaching Brandon is um, he wants to be better. He wants to be better. I, I, I don't think he's satisfied. I hope he's not satisfied. Um, and if we get any inkling that he, that he is satisfied, I think we'll handle that. But, uh, but I doubt that will happen. I don't think that will have to happen. But I think right now the best thing we can do is, is continue to coach him. And we coach him the same way we've been coaching him since he was a freshman when Coach Morgan had him. Um, the same way we, we've been coaching him since he was injured, since he missed time, and, and now since he's become a little bit of a household name, um, we can't change our approach, and I know he won't change his.